Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 29, 2023, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, we want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. So what are we talk about? Well, as usual, we're going to cover current market conditions and your questions on trading and your favorite stock and crypto picks. Hold off until we get to the live charts for the stocks and crypto and just put in one at a time if you don't mind. And that's All of that is for your benefits. So I'm going to continue the series on how to fail at trading part three. I might need to wrap things up tonight just because it's something that we could probably continue to add to for a while here. But if there is something that you do want covered or whatever, uh, if you're watching live, obviously put in a question. And then if you have any thoughts on how to fail at trading, uh, put them in the YouTube comments, if you don't mind. And then, you know, I want to make sure that this is not a negative presentation, so to speak. And it sounds negative, but basically I'm I'm trying to warn you against these behaviors and then show you some positive behaviors you can put in their place. And that'll all make sense as we go through it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about free rolling. And I have a lot of slides that I talked about in my stock chart show. I'm going to go through those pretty quickly. But I think right now it's important to show the methodology in action because we had so much inaction for so long, the sitting on your hands, which made everybody really tired and bored. And like I said a while back, some client was uh, getting tired of sitting on his hands. He says, well, I'm going to go try somebody else. I said, well, wait a minute. If that guy's a trend follower, he's going to look like a freaking genius. And I need to dig those emails out. And it's it's kind of interesting. And, and usually when everybody's about to give up on trend following, the market starts trending again, of course. That was a disclaimer screen a minute ago. As you know, you can lose money trading. I was off to sum it up, all predictions about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Now, I want to talk about the methodology in action. And then in the stock chart show, I show a mystery chart. So I've got a couple of those things to show you. And again, we're going to go through these fairly quickly. So this is a mystery chart reveal. This is QBTS, and you can see the parameters in the spreadsheet there. And I'll show you where to get the archives to this in just one second. But you had a nice thrust higher, a nice deep pullback. It was also a Landry-like pullback. You can see we pulled back to the 30 EMA. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about those in a few minutes. So just hang tight. Entry was there. Stop was down there. IPT was up here, and that's QBTS. So we'll see how that one shakes out. Now, I've been talking a lot about free rolling lately. Thank God. <laughs> and free rolling is when you get partial profits off at a position, obviously, and then your stop goes to break even, and then you trail a stop from there to hopefully hang with a position for a long, long time. So there's the original recommendation down below, 26.90 entry, 21.50 stop, and 32.30 for a risk of 5.4 points. And you can see Nice uptrend followed by a pullback to the EMA. This is also a Landry Light pullback. When it touches the EMA, that completes the pullback pattern. Now, I will, I'm going to show you one in a minute. I think it's BTBT that didn't quite get to the 30. And I do trade more than one pattern, but it just seems like lately these Landry Light pullbacks have been setting up really nicely. Anyway, you can see it was at a gradual uptrend. That's a lot of it's not shown. And then it began to accelerate higher. That's something I call accelerating momentum strategy. Also, Another strategy of mine, something I really love, is persistent pullbacks. And that's when you have persistency in the market, meaning that the market tends to go up day after day after day after day. Anyway, entry was there. Stop was down here. Initial profit target was there. Now, we will trail the stop. And I know I'm beating a dead horse a lot of this stuff. But if I don't sell these things, I'll get a lot of questions. We do trail a stop before the initial profit target is hit. And that's close to a one-to-one -one basis. The, the rule used to be one-to-one. -one. If it goes up one point, bring it up one point. Nowadays, in more recent times, I should say, over the past five years or so, I've been a little bit more lenient in trailing that stop on the first loaf. But I'm still trailing it fairly tightly, almost one-to-one. -one. In some cases, I'll let, let it open up a little bit. But once you get to the initial profit target and your stop is brought up to break even then you slowly let that stop open up you want to let it gradually open up and you can see so stop goes to break even once you hit your initial profit target 
And as you can see, and I just kind of eyeballed it in here, but that's roughly about where it was. And you can see we got stopped out, but you know, better than the poke in the eye type of trade. In fact, much better than the poke in the eye. So 2,500, you banked, and then you banked $1,000 earlier. So there's a swing trade loaf and the trending loaf. On a swing trade loaf, you made a thousand bucks, and that's the goal on a 100K account. And then you got stopped out for $2,500 gain all together, $3,500. There are my trades there. I got an SG trade here. I put in a, a order for to buy an option at a penny and forgot about it, and it uh, it triggered. <laughs> anyway, so this is what I call so long and thanks for all the fish. Ideally, you want to be with these things for a long, 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 long time. And we, we hung tight for, what, a month or two? So better than poking the eye or so long and thanks for all the fish. So that's where the portfolio did I did a right around that in this model account that I like to show I did around 3600 I did get out a little late I might have taken profits a little early it was kind of a gift horse situation which I'll talk about in just one second and the other thing is I was going to try to use a little discretion on the exit but ended up getting stopped out anyway and I did trade a few more shares so I ended up with like $3,600 in change as opposed to 3500 so I, I did a pretty good job mimicking the service there so here's another one btbt you can see nice uptrend remains or nice uptrend attack there and then you had somewhat of a tk up oh move almost a landry light pullback but i consider that a pullback in general entry was there stop was there initial profit target was there and again once you hit that ipt you bring the stop up to break even so in free rolling mode on this one too now this one is not doing a damn thing. So what do we do? Nothing. We sit, we wait. I don't want to say hope, but it hasn't done anything wrong just yet. It just hasn't done anything right. And as you can see here, I think the word of the night is Landry Light pullbacks. But you had a nice Landry Light, and this just counts the number of bars. So you had 30 bars or so of Landry Lights, and then it goes back to zero when it intersects the moving average. I like looking at a lot of charts. For one thing, I was talking about. And my trading simplified shows this makes it really easy to scan for you just look for consecutive bars of landry light i like the 30 the original pattern was with the 20 ema you might want to experiment with that a little bit i like the 30 because you, you get a little bit deeper pullback sometimes with the 30 as opposed to 20 or all the time i should say anyway entry was there stop was there ipt was here and i've done plenty of dead money reports and if this thing goes on to hit the ipt and hopefully, and I, you should never use the word hope, but hopefully we stay with it for a long, 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 long time. Then what I'll do is I'll make this another dead money report, as I have many times in the past. And again, not the last week at, ba at Bandcamp, yeah, but when I did the Trading Simplified show, I talked about in the past, I've had stocks go flat for several weeks, but they didn't do anything wrong by not stopping out. And, and you have to follow a plan. And your plan is, if your plan is, to stick with it until stopped out then that's your plan if your plan is stick with it three days it doesn't work bail that's fine that there's some problems with that but let's not get into that tonight but longer term you have to have some sort of solid plan that makes sense and for me getting out if stopped out is the plan now again you could argue dead money but you never know when this thing's going to take off in fact it actually was slightly in the positive today but so far we're still in the water on that but it is what it is now psychologically it could be tough to go back to the well but sim set up again and you you have to in your mind and it's not easy but you have to in your mind think okay if this were were a setup i was just seeing what i would i take it okay and then you sort of have to forget that you just made all that money in this because if you lose money in it then it's going to kind of upset you and and I guess the flip side is you just made all the money, so it's like your best friend, and you're thinking that, oh, well, I'm going to go hang out with him again or whatever, and then you get things don't work out, and then you get you get angry because, well, shoot, I had all that money, I gave up some of it on the trade, but I figured it was worth a shot. And you can see yet again another one of those Landry Light pullbacks. Landry Light again, lows greater than the moving average, so one day, one day, two days, two days. And you can see it just tells you the duration of the trend by see how many bars you have and it does not measure magnitude so you can see these get bigger 
each day you have one, even though in this case it started to revert back to the mean. But when it does touch the mean or the average, if you want to call it that, it goes back to zero. So again, another Landry light pullback entry there, stop down there, IPT up here. And that one did trigger today. And I'll take a look at things. I think I, sh I should be able to update these archives to within the last few days because we had a lot of stocks on the Landry list take off. So they came off of the Landry list. So I, I should be able to update these. But if you want to see these in real time, obviously you can, if you go to this page, you can click here, or you can click on the banner ad on my website. But if you want to see the archives for free, which I highly recommend you do, is go in and look at these and then you can see things warts and all. And you can see for months and months and months, I've probably bored you to death by telling you to do nothing. But you know what? When I look back at the market and I see how choppy it's been, and I and I take a look at what few stocks we traded, even though one or two worked here and there, for the most part, it wasn't work it, worth it. And sitting on your hands was the thing to do. Now all of a sudden, it's starting to work again. Well, that's what trend following is all about. It's like the hokey pokey. Anyway, daylearn.com slash archives, if you want to see those, daylearn.com slash trading service, all one word, if you want to see them in real time. Just real quick, I want to talk about following a system. And that's one thing you could sort of do if you're, if you're new to trading is find something super, super, super simple. And I'm going to kind of beat the dead horse a little bit on land you like pullbacks in a minute because I'm such a pullback fan. And that'll make sense in a second. But if you were to follow, if you wanted to get used to what trading is all about, maybe follow a super simple system and see how long you could follow it and try to follow it through good times, which is fairly easy. Nothing's easy in trading, right? But also follow it through bad. So if you were following my methodology, the core methodology, the bad times or the flat times, like we just had many months of, is when we're mostly not doing anything at all. But anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is the TFM 10% system. And the buy signal is two lows above the 50 simple moving average. And you close within 10% of the 50 week closing high. So back here, this was a 50 week closing high. This is 10% below. But as you go forward, 50 bores, obviously, this begins to drop with prices. Now, this is it the best signal to get you back in if there's a v-shaped recovery okay but if the market goes sideways at low levels for a long time then this buy line as i often call it eventually begins to catch up with price and you can see too it's going to take a little while but also the the, the line is now coming up because the 50 week closing high is probably that one right there. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. So that's 10% less that closing high. And that's this is a weekly chart, FYI. And then the moving average is starting to catch up to price too. Now, I don't have any money management per se as far as taking profits and all. I have 100 shares on here. I'm just trying to show that I, I actually am following this system just to see what would happen with it. It's kind of fun, right? What it's working it is <laughs> but you could see that uh, if it were to just implode then you would lose money because the entry was right around there but over time this moving average will start catching up to price and this will continue to follow price so you'll get stopped out at hopefully a much higher level than around 320. So there's a the trade, 319.49. I got in a little bit before the close on that Friday week. That was on 4-3, 2023 was the last signal there. And if you take the the snapshot at 363.21, I think we're about 20 cents above that now. The open profits from just 100 shares is 43.72. Now, when you're following a system one thing you will have is open profit drawdowns. So and that's a good problem to have is because it means you have profits to draw down. And that's just trend following. You're going to have to ride that out until stopped out. Ride it out until stopped out. Maybe I need to make a little saying or something like that. But what was kind of interesting is I looked at it just a couple of days ago when the market was getting whacked a little bit. I'm like, holy crap, there goes three, $400, just kind of evaporating. 
And then when I did the math on it, high to low, if I was mentally monetizing at the high to the low that we had, I guess, yesterday, that's a 1472 slide. So that's a $1,472. That's a pretty big slide. Now, about six or $700 of that has come back a little bit. Market rallies about six points or whatever it was from those lows. And obviously that comes back. But you have to get used to being willing to draw down when you are when you have open profits. And that's a good problem to have as, as I beat the dead horse on. Uh, Dennis and Eckhart, I forget which one. I think it was Dennis. Didn't have a problem with the turtles losing open profits if that was part of the system. But they did have a problem if they didn't get out of a market that they should have and they were losing money. So two different things. A little hard to wrap your head around. If you're going to mentally monetize something, and this isn't a great example, but if you look, go back to like that SYM, mentally monetize it down to the stop, and you're like, okay, if I get stopped out, I'm gonna, lose 20, I'm gonna make $2,500, not a 40, hopefully not a 40 and slip, as opposed to, oh, I would have, I would have been up another $1,000 at that peak or whatever it was, and I just lost $1,000. Well, that's a that's putting yourself into a negative mindset, and any neurologist worth his weight and salt knows that a negative emotion has twice the impact of a positive one. And more often than not, markets are backing and filling, okay, and retracing. So you're almost always in a bit of a drawdown, even when things are going swimmingly. You take a look at the the service, and then hopefully I'll have the archives updated close enough to where you can kind of see what we're talking about. But you go back a few days, and it was a lot higher than it is today, but one or two big up days is going to just make all the difference in the world there. All right, let's get back on how to fail at trading. Uh, feel free to fire questions at Will. I don't know how Will feels about that. <laughs> As I've been saying each week, things aren't brought about by thinking about the opposite, but you need to recognize when you are failing and why. And I think that's crucial. And I think that's something that people don't talk enough about. Everybody shows you these cherry picked signals and makes you think that trading is super easy. All the gurus we talked about last week on YouTube and other places. One of the biggest issues i see and i can't wrap my head around this but the good news is usually when i ask questions over and over eventually somebody will explain it to me but for some reason everybody wants or most everybody wants to reinvent the wheel when it comes to trading it's like i'll, I'll put out my trading service i'll lay out my methodology in case you want to pick your own stocks i'll do all this work and then people come to me and they're like, well, I'm working on this and I want to do this and I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And it's like, well, why don't you take something simple and make it work first? And I'm not saying don't do research, do some research on the side and maybe even grail hunt a little bit, even though that, that has a negative connotation, obviously. But make your bread and butter something that's simple and something that you can follow. Prove that you could be a trader by doing something simple. And then maybe add a little complexity over time. And then I, and then as I do, I add a little complexity, then I take away even more to where it gets it's more and more simple or simpler. Anyway, so I'm not the grand poobah, as I often say, but I have spent 30 years perfecting and simplifying the pullback. And along those lines, I'd be willing to bet that if you only traded Landry Light pullbacks, you would do pretty well. Now I'll I would suggest you add some other things in once you're successful with something like that, but maybe find one pattern and get good at it and then move on to additional patterns over time. So again, here's the Landry Light pullback from the SYM we talked about earlier. And from the entry to the high, that was a pretty good run. And then obviously we gave up some open profits and still, overall, it turned out to be a halfway decent trade. $3,500 on a 100K account, that's 3.5%, okay? I'd prefer it be to be $20,000 or more, but hey, you take what the market offers. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. So there's your stop out right there, a little bit less than the peak, obviously. And that's the thing, too. It's about trend following that you have to get used to over time. It's like you're going to give up profits along the way. There's going to be a lot of backing and filling, okay? And you just have to live with it because 
a lot of times, and I could show you winner after winner after winner, where you lost a lot of money in between. As I often say, as a trend follower, you spend a lot of time less wealthy. Even if you're getting wealthier over time, a lot of that time you're giving up those open profits. And the reason we let that stop widen out is we don't know whether or not the market's going to correct and then turn around and go right back up before stopping us out, ideally, or if it's going to take us out. So again, getting back to Dennis and Eckerd, you have to get used to giving up some of those open profits. It comes with the territory. Now, this stock is once again set up as a Landry Light pullback, so we'll see what happens. It did trigger today, as I said. Now, this stock was in my mind, and I went and looked at it. It turns out it was a Landry Light pullback, too. So you have close to, I think it's like $19,000 or so, and I have receipts to show you <laughs> if you want to see them. You can go in and watch old shows. In fact, you don't have to. I don't have to show you any receipts. You can see the actual trades. But in my model account, I did take this trade and had similar results to this. And that all started with just a simple little Landry Light pullback. And it's about a 300 and change, 325% run. Now, these don't come along every day. And you notice this is 2021. But we didn't stop out of this thing until I forget when we stopped out of it. I should have a date on here. But we held it for, I think, a year and a half. If somebody here um, traded along and remembers when we stopped out, just let me know. Anyway, QBTS, yet again, another Landry light pullback. You can see nice uptrend, nice accelerated uptrend, bigger picture, cup and handle not shown. And this thing has begun to take off today, notwithstanding. And this looks like a big picture bottom, looks like it's just ready to go. But it's also, to my surprise, a Landry light pullback. And for those keeping score, this is the Joby, which was recommended, or I'm not recommended, sorry, was an official recommended recommendation, but it was mentioned in the Landry list, and I'll show you that in just one second. So that was yet another Landry light pullback. And we'll come back to that one too. Now, one way to, to fail at trading is, is to try to trade the arcane or esoteric. And I'm not gonna say this gentleman's name i just did a google and it was this was one of the first things that came up i wanted to see what the current wave count was in the piece and so if you're uh if you recognize your your stuff here i'm not uh giving you credit because maybe what you're saying makes a lot of sense it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me and if you if you're watching this video and you recognize this, then feel free to put your name in the comments and I'll I'll give you your recognition. The rise could be the beginning of the final subwave, wave E minus eight within the final leg, wave C minus seven of the second corrective pattern with a compound correction wave two minus six that began in October. From the form of the chart, it seems somewhat more likely to me that the rise is a subwave within the declining wave d8 the next to last subwave within the final leg of the upward direction but wave patterns don't always present themselves with a great deal of clarity so if the upward movement starts to show more energy then i'll be more likely to switch to wave e minus eight scenario what are the alternatives the ambiguity ambiguity easy for me to say as the relative degree of the correction continues the ambiguity as to the relative degree of the correction continues i've marked it as minus six minuscule de degree in traditional elliott wave terminology but it could be larger so <laughs> i don't know maybe this makes sense but this makes no sense to me and i'm not an elliottician now, I will tell you this, somebody way smarter than me who managed or at least used to manage billions of dollars, and I'm not going to, I'll let him say it on his own, and he knows every, nearly every trader in the world, not every trader in the world, but he knows most all famous traders, and all most famous traders know him, dead and alive, dead or alive, he, he's, he's, known a lot of people throughout his career 
And he often says that he's never met a rich alienation. My experience with Elliott Wave is you'll get a perfect wave count in hindsight. So six months from now, we're going to know whether this gentleman was correct with a C7 or minuscule degree in traditional Elliott Wave terminology, but it could be larger. So we'll find out. <laughs> and it didn't be to pick on him. It was just the first thing that came up, and it, it just was a, a perfect gobbledygook in my humble opinion, which you're not supposed to say because if you're talking, it's your opinion, right? But anyway, in my humble opinion, I don't get it, okay? And it's not that I don't get it because I tried to understand it to get it. I understand enough about it to know that it's it's so subjective that these Elliot guys will argue amongst themselves quite a bit. And every now and then, there's a perfect wave count and everything works perfect. I realize that. But that's the exception and not the norm. Now, I didn't mean to pick on the Elliot people, but I just want to show you there's some really complex stuff out there that's really hard to, to figure out. And I'd be willing to bet, even if you're good at it, you'll get a wave wrong, you'll lose money, and then you'll eventually get it right. But how much money are you going to lose getting it right? You can argue the same thing happens with trend following, but I also sit on my hands quite a bit. And Yes, I'm a discretionary trader, so everything's subjective, correct, or open to discretion. But a lot of these patterns can be fairly mechanized, like the Landry Light pullbacks. I'll tell you why I like one over the other. But if I really like one, I really like one, and I can tell you exactly why I like it. Same thing, I just same points I brought up earlier: persistency, acceleration, ability to trade cleanly, which also dovetails in with persistency, and all those things I just talked about. Bigger picture patterns like cup and handles and things on top of that. Now, another thing is trading somebody else's game or influenced by trade goads. I get a screenshot quite often from somebody I'm very good friends with, and he's sort of hyperactive. He follows my trading service, he follows it to a T. He does a really good job with that. He does a little bit of his own trend following, but then he has this I don't want to say addiction. But he he really likes to go in and scout, but he's always sending me his P and Ls. And truth be told, sometimes I get a little jealous. And in the past, I've kind of gotten sucked into some of his trades. The problem is, as soon as I'm getting in, he's already getting out because he's because he's so hyperactive. The other thing too is if you are going to follow somebody, then you need to see everything that they're doing. You know, but Dave, you make a lot of trades that don't show us. Yes, but everything I recommend directly, for instance, through the trading service, I do actually take the trade in the quantity that I say, maybe a little bit more in some cases, and, and then in other accounts too, but as far as like to show the model account, I go in and I take those actual trades and I can show you those trades as I do them in the service. So I've got stopped out of SYM, as you just saw, made $3,600. And believe me, there's stinkers. There's plenty of stinkers along the way too. And I take my lumps. But unless somebody is showing you every trade that they're making and you know where they're coming from, okay? Like in my case, I've spent all this time talking about Landry Light pullbacks, persistent pullbacks, maybe buy at B patterns and IPOs and all this other stuff. Well, you can kind of get where I'm coming from, okay? Like that's what... That's too long of a story. But anyway, <laughs> I got to get tell it. I was in uh, was it Germany? No, Russia. And uh, somebody said something about GAN. I said, I don't get GAN, meaning that I don't get that type of esoteric stuff. And he says, you have an MBA and you have a degree in computer science. How could you not get GAN? It's like, oh, you know, I'm getting heckled here. And then afterwards, the guy would like want to be my best friend. I'm like, you just heckled me. <laughs> you know, it's like, give me a break. Well, Mr. Gann didn't get Mr. Gann either. Mr. Gann died broke. So I don't know. That that esoteric stuff is kind of cool and neat, but I don't think that it's actionable. But anyway, if you are gonna get sucked into a trade with someone, make sure they're doing what what you do, okay? 
the the great thing about the Facebook group, and I know we, we there's some other styles in there too, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But the great thing is we do have a lot of common interest in the trends and in the IPOs and in the, the a lot of my patterns or patterns very similar to mine. So it's like we kind of help each other out. And, and that's a good thing. But be careful if you're getting goaded into somebody's trades. And then, you know, not to pick on this, the guy I was talking about earlier. But, you know, here we go again, like clockwork early in the morning, I get a text or a, a, a P&L shot from him which I enjoy. So if he's watching and listening, keep sending them because I really am fascinated with it all. Anything trading fascinates me. But I'm like, damn, he's kicking ass again today and I'm really not doing so well. And then he texted me a couple hours later. And he's like, yeah, all that's going and then some. So it's like, okay. So I allowed myself to feel like I'm missing out for some reason. I'm feeling that FOMO, like why am I not doing these things? And then he told me a little while later that yeah, it all it all went away, and he actually ended up down for the day. So be careful if you're going to follow someone. Make sure you truly follow them, understand what they're doing. Otherwise, don't get sucked into the goads. Now, I had a couple of people talk to me about the Joby, and the question he's asking here, he's uh, this gentleman Hal. He's actually in the Asia Pacific. I think he's in China. So um, he's sleeping right now, um, and he was talking about missing Joby, and somebody else was talking to me about it. And Joby was on the Landry list a few days ago. I'll show you that in one second. And he's asking, what does a gift horse look like? So I'm not sure exactly what he's asking, so I can maybe answer that question. And then I want to talk a little bit about whether or not you should have missed the Joby trade. And I don't have a definitive answer for you, spoiler alert. What does a gift horse look like if you want to throw salt in my wound bitterness? So he was he was looking at the stock and he didn't take it. Have a look at Joby and please let me know when you have considered it as a gift horse if it already qualifies. Okay, so we'll take a look at the charts there. We'll try to figure out his question. But each day when I publish a service spreadsheet and make a video, I publish a Landry list over here. So these numbers did get bigger and they got smaller today. Okay, so that's 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 good to see. Anyway, before I digress too far. So there's a Joby, which I said earlier was a Landry Life pullback. Well, as far as a, a gift horse situation, when I use the term gift horse, I'm talking about a stock you're already in, okay? And let's say you're looking for $2,000 on 100K or 2% on 100K account for your initial profit target. And when you hit that 2K, you're going to take 1K off, like I showed a few minutes ago. Let's say you're up about 900 bucks and, and, and it got there quickly, like on a day like today. Let's say you're already long this stock and it shot up. And it wasn't quite two points, but it shot up so far and so fast by all means, lock in that initial profit target. Now, officially in the trading service to follow things mechanically, so there's not a whole lot of questions going on. Yes, the, the trading service itself, the spreadsheet, the model spreadsheet follows everything pretty much mechanically. Even though I try to follow it as mechanically as possible, I do put a little bit of discretion on it. I just can't help myself. Like the sim, I let it go a little bit past the stop, and then I got out. I think if you go back and look at the original exit on that, I might have exited a slight bit early when it was stalling out after it made a big pop over two days or something. But in general, I'm following it fairly close. But if something gets fairly close, not to make that a segue, if something is approaching the, let's just say it this way, if something's approaching the profit target, the IPT, and it just can't quite get there, or if it got there really, really fast, okay? Let's say it went straight up for two days and it's almost there and it starts rolling over a little bit, they by all means lock in a little bit of profit. That's what I call a gift horse. So I think Hal is asking a different question and I didn't want to wake him up to find out his question. So uh, we'll, um, we'll noodle with that a little bit and figure it out. Could you get into Joby, the mother of all bad fills? Yeah, Keith, I agree. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So could you really have gotten into it? The pro problem number one is it had this huge gap higher, okay? So Hal's beating himself up a little bit over this. And shit, I'm beating myself up over it a little bit. 
And the thing is, and, and I didn't see the initial pop. I was off chasing rabbits, probably. And I wasn't following it as an official setup. Like sometimes I'll I'll take a look at a Landry list for what I call the Russian doll patterns. Like let's say this was down here, it didn't gap so higher. Then you're looking to try to capture an intraday move out of a bigger picture pattern. Okay. And this was not an official setup, it was an ancillary setup. So it was kind of tough in that case, but you could see that this was a gap. And then this is the five minute chart. It made a really huge move in the first five minutes. So if you're trying to get in this and it already gapped higher, it's really hard to just jump in midstream. So I don't want to make it look like this could have been an easy trade. Now, if somebody here caught it, uh, let me know. And I think there might be some somebody in the Facebook uh, group caught it. But Keith says, could you get in Joby, the mother of all bad feels? Probably. Probably would have had a really bad feel, would have been hard to get into. And that's the point I'm trying to make. I don't want to make it look too easy here. You know, had I not missed the first five minutes, it's hard to say whether or not I would have jumped in or not. But I did not I did not see a takeoff in the first five minutes because I wasn't specifically focused on it. And and I'd have been upset if I would have uh, thought about trading it and didn't actually and, and then missed it. OK, so John pointed out. Yeah, OK, I didn't know whether that was in a private message or not. OK, so John said how posted his plan in Facebook. It looked like he didn't follow it. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know if he was sleeping when it all went down. I don't know when he wakes up. I don't know if he wakes up and watches the open or, or how he does that. I know sometimes he puts in orders overnight. Um, so I, I'll have to look again. And, and I thought it was in a private message and I couldn't find it right before it went live tonight. I was looking for it. So I'll, I'll take a look at that, uh, John. Thanks for bringing that up. So I didn't realize it was an actual post because I, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't find it. And then it's like, well, maybe it wasn't how. So I'll find it in, in, the, in the post. So thank you on that. I appreciate it. Anyway, it was such a fast move, plus the gap. It, it would have been hard to get in. All right, let's shift gears. Let's go to Crypto Corner. Let's take a look at some crypto pairs. Let me get this uh, screen changed over. Look for my Joby post with picture. Okay, okay. So John was talking about Joby and uh, Hal chimed in. Cool. All right, fantastic. All right, let's get this application shared. Okay, so crypto is getting interesting. Uh, we were talking about this in Facebook. Fidelity and BlackRock or both trying to get out ETFs, GBTC for Bitcoin. GBTC was is the original ETF, although it's not an ETF. They've been working really hard. They have a lawsuit in place trying to get it to ETF status. Now, if they were to be able to get uh, an actual ETF on Bitcoin, on Bitcoin, on the cash Bitcoin, not to be confused with Bitcoin Cash, which we'll take a look at in one second, but on the cash Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin, I really think Bitcoin would explode. There's a lot of people out there that want to buy Bitcoin, but they don't even know, they, they don't have an idea about how to go about doing it. They might not trust these exchanges, rightfully so. It's getting harder and harder to trade. U.S. is cracking down. I have some money with one of these offshore um, brokerages, and I use that term loosely, brokerages. <laughs> you know, and it looks like uh, they're not going to be able to operate in the U.S. soon, or they're just going to voluntarily withdraw because it's too much hassle. So it's going to be interesting in crypto, and it's going to suck without having these brokerages where you can get a, a whole bunch of these um, shit coins, as we call them, or shiz coins, as I think I now call them. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bitcoin looking pretty good, though. You can see it's uh, it's breaking away from its 30 EMA. Uh, the the premium is really starting to come off of that GBTC. The premium, I'm sorry, the discount. So if you had faith, 
and a crystal ball maybe you could buy bitcoin at a 30 a 40 percent discount at least you could by buying gbtc i don't recommend you go out and do that just because there's a reason why there's such a discount but that discount has really begun to come off and maybe people are speculating that gbtc could be the first etf out there but there's a lot of big boys once you see blackrock and fidelity <laughs> going after something that's the real deal not to confuse the issue with facts but anyway bitcoin looking better as i've been saying quite a bit one thing that's kind of interesting at least in more recent times with bitcoin is whenever it gets creamed it comes right back now that's not a trading system please do not go lose money by buying dips in bitcoin but it does seem to come back with a vengeance at least in more recent times every time it gets whacked pretty hard and that just makes me believe that there's some underlying demand maybe i'm drinking the kool-aid this is what's actually called bitcoin cash i forget exactly how it all went down i listened to a book called digital gold maybe that talked all about bitcoin i forget about the the cash but i think there's some hard feelings between the people who invented bitcoin cash and bitcoin this is not actually bitcoin but bitcoin is bitcoin hopefully that makes sense ethereum has been lagging if we take a look at ethereum to bitcoin you could see that uh no bueno here right uh, pretty serious downtrend so that means that ethereum is doing poorly relative to bitcoin so bitcoin is once again the shining star out here doing the best now any uh you guys want to look at any pairs or anything i'll just do a quick um relative strength sort and see what's moving let's see if there's anything happening tonight now as i've said a thousand times probably a simple little uh way to stay out of trouble is don't buy anything while it's below the 50 i'm sorry the 30 ema the 30 exponential moving average just don't bother okay and that almost goes for any market whatsoever but dave bitcoin cash sure went up you could have bought it under 30. yeah but a lot of these you start going through these some of these turds in here pardon my french like this one okay look how long it stayed under the 30 and look what it did lost uh 80 percent of its value look at that one I feel like tiny elvis look at that one you know just just so don't buy anything unless it's going up. Unless the, uh, I need to get a cheap mic to drop. I've, I've broken mics doing that <laughs> in presentations. But yeah, don't buy them unless they go up. Okay, you guys don't wanna talk about any, that's fine. Let's uh, shift gears and let's go to stocks. And if you guys wanna ask about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. It shouldn't take too long. S&P 500, a little bit of a bull flag in here, a little bit of a rally out of it, so far so good. That's almost textbook, it's almost too textbook, it kind of uh, kind of scares me. But yeah, that looks pretty good, as you can see, so far so good for the P's. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. George, I think that's in the Landry list, so we're gonna pass on that one, but uh, good call. NASDAQ composite, a little flat, but also trying to rally out of that flag pattern, bull flag. So looking better and better. Obviously, the Qs, we just talked about those guys. Looking pretty good. Same sort of action there, kind of a shallow pullback. So far, so good. And hey, guess what? No, not chicken butt. The Rusty actually rallied a little bit today, believe it or not, up percent and change. Still stuck in this stupid sideways range, but it's a little closer to the top of the range than the bottom of the range. So that's certainly a good thing. Banks bouncing back a little today i sure like to see him take out these recent peaks in here and not look back the regionals are still lagging which kind of got us into this all all this mess but they did rally a little bit today i sure like to see him take out these recent highs let's take a look at the financials the good thing is financials in spite of the banks are doing pretty good i wouldn't rush out and buy them just based on this one leg up followed by this little leg out of that leg but they're certainly doing okay drugs on the other hand not doing so hot they're kind of stuck in this sideways range it did bounce a little bit today though but for me to get excited they're gonna to have to get out of this range and keep on keeping on yeah keep the stock picks coming we'll get to them in just a second 
Manufacturing, almost all-time highs there, one-year-plus highs. That's looking pretty damn good. Take a look at M&C. I've already said shit, so I guess I demonetize. <laughs> I just well, I think I actually think you get paid more when you curse. That's uh, <laughs> what when I say yeah, I I I say some curse words. I'm a trader. <laughs> Seems like I get paid more for the videos. M and C, look at that materials of construction, and I would never confuse the issue with facts, but this can't be a horrible economy if this uh, or it's certainly improving commodity or uh, economy. Let me rewind that a second. Whoop. The market looks ahead. So this doesn't necessarily reflect what's happening now. This reflects what the market thinks about materials and construction. So that's certainly looking pretty good. Transports, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about the transports, but it is good to see more and more pieces come together. And they've been on a pretty good run as of late, not too far from those all-time highs. So, so far, so good for the trannies. Let's take a look at software, trying to rally out of a little bit of flag pattern like the NASDAQ, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, hardware, aka Apple, right here at all-time highs. Look at that, or just off of all-time highs. What is Apple doing? Yeah, Apple looks pretty good. It needs to pull back, but look at that, all-time highs for Apple. So, want to pull back, that might, uh, that might be interesting. I usually prefer trading something uh, more inefficient, but hell, that thing is going up quite a bit. It's acting like an inefficient stock. HV is 17, though. It's pretty low. Uh, what's SIM? I wonder if it's still in here. We've got SIM is uh, 102, and I think QBTS was the extreme, or BTBT. Yeah, 231. This is one of the more extreme stocks that I've ever traded. I think that's the highest HV ever. The P's are at 12. As a general statement, it's hard to beat a market with stocks that are less volatile than the overall market. Semiconductors, I like the semis to confirm what's happening in the overall market, when it's going up, of course. And I'm a little bummed out that semis have come back below this prior peak in here. Maybe they're just catching their breath. Yes, the uptrend is still intact, but I feel a lot better if they broke out the brand new highs. And while we're wishing for stuff, if they got the brand new highs, they wouldn't be too far from all-time highs. And I think we could be on a tear if we made it to all-time highs. But right now, I'm a little concerned with the stalling action. Kind of has a micro head and shoulders pattern to it. But I'm not going to get too caught up in the weeds on that. So far, the trend is up. So that's pretty much it for what's uh, relative in the market. Let's take a look at bonds real quick. Bonds are pushing back toward the bottom of their range. It's good to see that they're they're off their lows, but I'd like to see them get out of this range. Bonds up, rates down. So I'd like to see that improve a little bit, obviously. Okay, Keith says, CX was in a show a while back. Has it set up again? How does it look? CX. Um, it's definitely trending. It kind of pulled back toward the top of its prior peak in here. So that's a, a minor ding on it. It actually needs a little bit more pullback, but a little bit more pullback would put it below this prior peak. So that's kind of a, and that's hard to explain, but for that reason, I'd probably pass. And I, it, you have a lot of overhead back here. So I, I think I would have passed. I'd pass on that one. I just don't see anything to get too excited about there, Keith. NTCO. Yeah, that looks pretty good at first glance. So you've got a nice run higher. You've got decent volume. It could use a little bit more pullback. Let's start backing it out and see. Little wide and loose here and there. I'm going to give you an okay on that one. It's got some issues way back here. I'll give you an okay on that one. It could use a little bit more pullback. We'll know when we see it. But And the problem is you might be getting close to this prior little peak if it starts pulling back. But I'll give you a solid okay on that one. Yeah, NPWR. This one's tricky. Uh, but, yeah, I did kind of make that super deep retracement. And it, it got it, – I just found it a little too deep. I did trade this one as a, uh, what did I, how did I buy this one? I forget. It was a buy at B, I think. And then I flipped out and stopped out, flipped out and stopped out. 
So you're saying 1458. Yeah, I, I can't really fault you on that because as IPOs make new closing highs, they tend to keep making new closing highs because people get left behind. So if this thing went up and let's say you did trigger in, he's saying at 1458. Um, I, I think that would be okay. I wouldn't bet the form. This is not a trade I'd look at and, and I'd go in at a full position size, 2% size. I wouldn't put 2% of my account in this thing if stopped out. But yeah, maybe an S&G trade above that pivot point. I, I, I hear you. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a, a solid okay on that one too. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I think that could work. Um, it's just not... It's not jumping out at me as something I, that I want to go after at this juncture. Now, what was one like the other day? ATMU. This one's looking okay. Um, I would have preferred if it had broke out and kept breaking out. I did not trade this buy at B. The buy at B because of day one. A lot of confusion is day one rule. Okay, we're buying at a five day closing high. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five day closing highs right there. Okay. So technically, the buy would have been here. However, if the first day of trading sets the high for the week, okay, even if on day five it succeeded, day five it also has to close above that high. So in this case, it was day 15 or 20 or whatever when it triggered, when it closed here. And like I said in the group when we were talking about this one on Facebook, I went ahead and I passed on this one. Um, if this breakout was a little bit above this high, then that would be one of those kind of first pullback type of patterns that might be worth a shot. When when I pass on a Pioneer setup, like the Buy at B, which is pretty much our only Pioneer setup for IPOs, it doesn't mean that I'm passing forever. When Academy Sports came public, I passed at the Buy at B. I'm like, eh, it's brick and mortar retail. It's like, who's going to? Who's going to go buy a bunch of stuff from a brick and mortar retail? Well, I didn't know that people would be sick of being cooped up in their houses and go buy kayaks and shit, you know, <laughs> and bikes and all to get out of the freaking house. But I did play the first pullback. And if you go and look at those archives, those aforementioned archives, you'll see how we played it. But I waited for that first pullback. So a secondary pattern. So I won't take a pioneer pattern in an IPO if everything's not set up like I want. But I will take a secondary setup. So this one could turn into a secondary setup, although I just wish it would have broken out a lot more before it pulled back. All right, Christopher says XBI. That's going to be an ETF, right? Okay. That's biotech. Yeah, biotech, I don't know if I showed it earlier, but biotech's been a bit of a bummer. Biotech kind of stalled out its prior highs and it's got some trading to get through back here. So it's a bit of a bummer. It's it's pretty much sideways now. Yeah, it's kind of worked its way higher if you can argue since March, but it's kind of all, all over the place. So the XBI double bottom support 200 day moving average. Take a look at that. Okay. Um I don't really get too excited about like a double bottom at the moving average. I mean, if that's something that you you do, uh, to me, I'm kind of looking bigger picture and drawing my sideways arrow here. For me to actually trade this market, it would actually have to make new highs, okay? And then pull back or come down way down here and bottom out forever and make a bow tie or something. So yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It is, it, it's definitely finding a little support at the 200. So that's, that's good if you're you're doing analysis, and maybe that's what you're doing, Christopher. I don't know. But if you do an analysis, say, okay, it's holding 200, that's a positive. But your trigger needs to be something a little bit more solid than than just that, okay? Trigger for me or entry for me would be it'd have to break out of this range and then pull back, and I'd look to play it on the pullback. So, I mean, you've got, you've got sectors out there that are trending. Software, semis to some extent, like we just said. Uh, material construction, there's plenty of areas out there, and on pullbacks, we should start seeing some setups. Okay, any more? It's funny, ever since we started Facebook, the, the questions are very few and far between, but that's okay. That's okay, it means we're getting something done during the day. 
Well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Anything unanswered? If you're not in Facebook, you can reach me at davelander.com slash contact. Leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. Would love to have you live if you want, and you can ask your questions live, davelander.com slash webinar. I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Thank you. Y'all too. You're welcome, John. You're welcome, Mark.